I talk about Guangdong's energy outlook uh, in China's context. Uh, before I talk, uh, I have to confess that I have a problem with my throat, and it's due to air pollution. <laughs> and uh, that's true, because I have a chronic problem with my throat. I have been here for about uh, 15, 20 years, since uh, I was a little boy, uh, that time at middle school. Um, I got this problem, and that, that was because of uh, energy. Of course, it's, uh, air, air pollution was caused by energy consumption, and uh, that was uh, part of my passion for doing this uh, in Taipei. And today, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, it's about Guangdong's energy outlook. I put it into China's big context. I'll talk about three uh, main things. For the paper, you can read it. But, so I'll just emphasize three um, major aspects. First one is uh, we call it energy profile. So China and Guangdong. Um, to, uh, this uh, is two phase half, and also uh, second one is uh, what kind of options uh, Guangdong can have um, in terms of energy. Also, many uh, uh, also mentioned uh, nuclear. And sec uh, third one, I'll, I'll also talk about this uh, uh, the Hong Kong Guangdong linkage uh, in terms of this. First one is about energy profile. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> as a as a professor, I have to teach uh, with uh, with numbers. I try my best uh, to give you fewer numbers, but uh, really. <laughs> Cannot resist the temptation to give you some numbers. This one, for example, is a, is a per capita GDP, and the, the y axis is uh, the per capita energy consumption. And you can see that, especially in the, you know, for different parts of the world, the message is that if you, in, the, in the very beginning, beginning of your development, if you get richer, you consume more energy. And uh, the problem for, for, for Guangdong and for China is this one is, uh, this one is for Guangdong, um, I guess. Uh, and you can see that it's uh, still in the early stage of development, and we expect to see that uh, they will cons consume more energy. And uh, that's a major message. And then if they have to consume energy, what kind of energy they consume? It's a many of COVID, COVID dominance, um, the entire energy mix in China and Guangdong. Well, this one is uh, China's. Um, you can see that for the entire energy consumption, this one is coal. Could take about 70%. Um, and uh, in Guangdong, it's a little bit different, but it's still about half. So the major problem, uh, the major uh, problem in China is uh, the COVID dominance in type of picture. And uh, it happens not only for the energy mix, but also it's for the power generation too, electric generation. You see the same thing. Um, for the thermal power, it's even more dominant because uh, you, get, you, take, you can take out oil because oil is not made for power generation, but oil is, uh, is used uh, a lot for, for transportation and also for chemical industries. But uh, for, for, for this one, for power generation, you can see that for the, uh, the coal really takes about 80% of the entire uh, share in China. And for Guangdong, uh, Guangdong has to import a lot of electricity from other provinces, mainly from, uh, from the western uh, provinces of Quebec and Myanmar. And uh, for coal itself, and many of us talk about thermal, it's, uh, it's about coal, because natural gas really a tiny piece, and, and oil is, uh, is almost not there, it's very little. So this one says uh, <coughs> about 60 percent, 63 percent of the Guangdong's electricity generation comes from coal, and uh, for the imported part, it's also a very large share uh, coming from coal. So the message for this part is uh, we expect to see uh, Guangdong will consume more energy into the future in, in the process of its development, and coal is dominating, and that is our baseline. And, and then we'll talk about what kind of options they uh, going to have. First one, of course, it is most important to, to increase the energy efficiency. It's really important. I'll show you, uh, uh, I have data for, for China, but I don't have that detailed data for Gondo. But uh, you can see that this, there's two places they have a share similar trend to some extent. For example, this one, this graph shows um, the five-year change rate, for example. Um, this one, the GDP. Um, in GDP terms, every five years, it's, um, the Chinese GDP grow about 68% to 80%. That's a very huge increase. And especially, so this one is carbon dioxide emissions increase. So especially in these years, the Chinese carbon dioxide emissions went up just too fast. It's, uh, it went up even faster than GDP. But the problem, the, 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 so that one caused a lot of problems. So that one is, uh, this one is curved through the carbon dioxide intensity. So it went up, so it was even positive. Generally it was negative, which means great. So in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this trend, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, economy is getting more energy efficient um, because carbon dioxide emissions mainly comes from, this one is uh, from energy consumption. So this, this little uh, spike caused a lot of problems. You see that why, this, why the Chinese carbon dioxide emissions went so fast 
those mainly because of this difference. So the Chinese government said they want to reduce carbon dioxide emission intensity by 40% to 45% in 2020 compared with uh, some five levels. So this one is you have to achieve at least this much reduction in, for every five years. So what happened in the past five years in, this, this, uh, in the 11 5 plan many, so it went down again. So that's great, that's great thing because um, because the Chinese government really put a lot of emphasis on efficiency. That makes uh, the economy more efficient, more energy efficient than before. So that's the general picture. And uh, just the, for the power sector itself, so if, I, if we compare the, power, the thermal efficiency um, of the power generation average efficiency um, in, this, in, in, in China and in the United States, this one is from 2000 to 2010, uh, 11 years of data. And this one is efficiency. So in the, in the United States, the average uh, thermal efficiency in the U.S. power station, pretty uh, co-power stations, was pretty stable, about, about uh, 33 percent. And in China, it went up very fast. So the, the, the thing happened mainly because uh, the U.S. power co-power stations are really old, 30, 40 years old. But uh, most of the Chinese co-power stations today were built in the past 10 years. They use very modern technology. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a big, big, basic thing. But you can see that's Despite this, uh, this kind of very, uh, very rapid improvement, we still saw that energy consumption in China went up very fast. Okay, so that is, that's a, that's the baseline we have to we have to emphasize that that uh, if one wants want to do anything about energy, first one is you have to do more on this. But even this, it's still very fast, but uh, it's not fast enough. We try to to do more, but then so because they have to satisfy the demand of uh, huge among energy and uh, they have to find some energy resources and uh, we don't have uh, a perfect energy source and that's a, that's a general picture. For example, coal really has problems. Uh, so for example, this one is, uh, I, I'll show this, uh, this picture a lot, it's, it's very interesting. It's, uh, this one happens in the, in the beginning of this year, in January uh, 2013. It was in Beijing. Uh, okay, um, the people said that they really love uh, blue sky, but the blue sky is not a, on the sky, it's only on screen. <laughs> okay. That's mainly because air pollution. As, you know, if I live there, I I live seven years in Beijing. Every year, every every spring time, I have to cough for about one to two months. That was really horrible. So I really have this problem there. Yeah. So air pollution is very important. And the second one is about climate change. Climate change. I got this uh, very recent. Uh, uh, um, this uh, last uh, I updated last uh, last Saturday, I guess. Um, so you see that uh, the carbon dioxide emissions, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm sure you have seen this, uh, this graph, it's a uh, really famous graph. Uh, so from 19, they started to measure, measuring the carbon dioxide concentration of uh, this uh, Hawaii uh, station um, from 1958, it went up very fast. Curled, today we are we're reaching about 400 ppm, a milestone. Okay. And uh, besides air pollution and the climate change, um, another thing very important so in China is coma accident. Okay. About 10 years ago, um, about, um, about 10, 15 years ago, about uh, 10,000 people uh, died in coma every year in China. Um, this year, uh, this number has decreased substantially to about 1 to 2,000. But still, 1 to 2,000 people are lost in coal mines. So that's a coal problem in China. Of course, coal has very great advantage, which means coal is very cheap, okay, to some extent. But not, not to a uh, great extent these days, because coal is getting more and more expensive. Anyway, so coal, is, coal has uh, problems. And uh, hydropower also has problems. You can see that, I uh, just uh, gave you some uh, picture and pictures, but uh, these hydro dams. And this is uh, the Three Gorges Dam. It's just one tiny piece here, okay? And uh, very few people will argue that China does not develop hydropower uh, fast. China is de developing, probably a lot of people will argue that China is developing hydropower too fast. It causes a lot of problems. And even, even if, um, even, even when China is doing this, uh, driving hydropower really fast, we, ha we still see that the, the importance of hydropower decreasing in the, in the overall energy mix. For so example, in the United States, because uh, from 1950 to, to 2000, and uh, around 10, so the, the importance of uh, hydropower in the total electric generation went down from 30% to about 5%. And China is still decreasing. Okay. Well, it's fast, but uh, it's not as fast as other other means, and uh, still pro uh, uh, a lot of people argue it's too fast. It really causes a lot of problems in China, and of course, oil and natural gas also have their problems. Um, well, recently, of course, today we also hear, uh, 
further news that uh, there's, uh, there's uh, China is trying to develop the natural gas uh, field in East China Sea. That caused a lot of uh, uh, trouble between China and Japan, and of course uh, that is, uh, and also that other also correlates with uh, Zhou Yutai uh, problem. And the other one is uh, the shale gas. Shale gas is very is a revolutionary um, uh, energy type uh, these days in the United States because when you compare coal and natural gas, in the, in the past you have to have a trade off. Coal was cheap, natural gas was clean. Okay, but uh, for for a period of time in the, in the United States in the past few years. Um, Natural gas is not only uh, clean but also cheap. Okay, that was that was mainly because shale gas development. They have uh, very a major breakthrough in the shale gas development technologies. So shale gas become very very cheap. And if you compare that, for example, natural gas price in the U.S. market and the Asian market, the Asian market the price is about uh, um, uh, five six times um, hence uh, of, of the price in the U.S. Very different. And so China tried to try to copy this story. China is the largest country in terms of shale gas resource. Thanks. Uh, but there's a big problem with shale gas. So you can see that this is a major Chinese uh, shale gas, uh, especially uh, Sichuan and uh, and Xinjiang. So there are major sh uh, the major shale gas uh, sites in China. But uh, there's a big problem. Uh, the shale gas, this technology, shale gas, they have to use a fracking technology. This kind of fracking technology, they have the danger to have. Uh, uh, very important env environmental impacts. And uh, the problem for China is uh, that we don't have very good rule of law, which means we don't regulate, we don't, have, we don't enforce our env environmental laws very, uh, very effectively. So which means if we cannot control the env environmental impacts in the shale gas development, we, we, can, we can run into big trouble. Okay. So that, is a, that, that also has some constraints on, on the, uh, how much natural gas that can be put into use. Okay. And of course, uh, renewable energy is really also is, is great, but it also has problems. And China, is, uh, you cannot criticize China for being too slow, because China is really bad. So yes. And this means uh, the Chinese uh, hydro is wind, wind capacity, the cumulative wind um, um, capacity. So China has been the largest country uh, in terms of wind uh, power. But uh, wind also has problems, for example, especially for Guangdong. So this one is uh, wind electricity cost. And so how, how much money have to, we have to pay to, to get electricity from wind. And uh, the, this red color means it's cheap. That's great wind, wind resource. But this color means that wind resource. So you have to pay more. Of course, you can get wind uh, and electricity, but you have to pay more. So which means how much money what you're willing to pay. Uh, it will also affect how much renewable energy you can get. And of course, nuclear energy also has a, a, a advantages problems. This advantage is uh, the life cycle of carbon dioxide emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions, of course, coal, and there is coal. The nu nuclear is, uh, is, uh, is here. Nuclear is, uh, emits a little bit uh, of, of greenhouse gases uh, during its con construction and also transport of fuel and uh, other, for other purposes. But uh, for coal and others, uh, in the combustion process, it emits a lot of carbon dioxide. But of course, the, 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 the most important negative impact is uh, the danger of uh, nuclear accidents. Well, this one is. Uh, <coughs> In the Fukushima uh, nuclear accident, you have to this uh, little trade-off. So nuclear is not perfect at all. Uh, and this one is uh, this one you can see that uh, you, have, you can read it in the in the, in the paper. It uh, says that Fukushima does have some impact in on China, the so nuclear development, but uh, not that much. Uh, it, it slowed down a little bit, uh, but uh, it will it will continue. And and this one that, that was, we have to discuss uh, all these energy options and come out of. Uh, uh, this is a plan in Guangdong to see how much additional power capacity they will have. And uh, you see that coal uh, takes about 15%, and gas uh, is uh, about 23%, and nuclear about 19%. You see that is a very message, is a very important message here is they're diverging away from coal. Okay. Coal, coal is, uh, co so the share of coal here in this additional power capacity picture is a lot smaller than the current uh, profile. So they're diverging away from coal to try their best to, to get whatever the technology, whatever energy they can have to replace coal. That is, uh, that is a major thing. And then I'll take uh, uh, two minutes probably uh, to, to talk about Hong Kong Guangdong uh, linkage. And this one, is, of course, is pretty famous. Uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody, everybody knows. Uh, this uh, is government, uh, Hong Kong government plan to increase uh, the, the share of nuclear electricity from 23 percent to about 50 percent. Uh, and from, 19, from 2009 to 2020. And so 
So, oh, oh, um, I'm interested in this. Is uh, for example, is uh, this one is a uh, Hong Kong's greenhouse gas uh, uh, emissions. Um, so over the so over the years in the past 20 years, um, so there was a big drop from this year from 1993 to 1994. That was a big drop. Thanks. Uh, it's really interesting what happened. I mean, so the big, the big thing is because of this. What happened is because of DIA, because of nuclear power station. The greenhouse gases originally, for example, it, it could come from coal, from, could come from natural gas, could come from oil, but now it comes from uh, nuclear power stations. So fewer, uh, less electricity generated in Hong Kong's uh, territory. And so which means Hong Kong's greenhouse gas emissions could be lower. But uh, there is a problem. So it depends on how, how large your bubble is. So if you're, talk, if you're talking about greenhouse gas emissions in Hong Kong alone, or if you're talking about greenhouse gas emissions in Hong Kong plus Guangdong. So if you talk about different things, they'll give you a very different picture. For example, for, for this one, Hong Kong's greenhouse gas emissions went down, but uh, Hong Kong plus Hong Kong's greenhouse gas, gas emissions will not change. Okay, so that's, that's a leakage problem. So if, Guangdong, if Hong Kong has, uh, needs to have any plan on its, uh, on its uh, um, greenhouse gas emissions, it has to consider Guangdong. If, if not, that would be a, um, a problem. Uh, very short message. First one is uh, take a message, three, three, three of them. Uh, Guangdong is expected to consume more. And uh, so Guangdong, so they all continue relying on a portfolio of energy resources. They're not, they're not going to rely on a single one. Not coal, not nuclear, not hydro. They have to rely on a portfolio of uh, energy resources. And they'll they try their best to drive the world away from coal because coal really has uh, too, too many problems. And of course, others also have the air problems. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a trade-off, it's a balance. And, uh, and the third message is that we have to consider these two, uh, Guangdong and Hong Kong, together in order to make our current plan. Thank you.